follow in order because if you basically have this Boehner plan that you say can't get through the Senate, and you've got a replan that the Republicans don't think can get through the Senate or the House, and you're saying we want to compromise, what was the point of giving a prime time address to the nation without an Obama plan and say neither of these other plans okay. can work? I where understand the idea the that there is not an Obama plan is uh, like not, point not number one, one, one on is point number one. On the on the talking points issued by the Republican Party, I get it. No, 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 that's not okay. a talking point. No, 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 show us the plan. Well, it's not a talking point. That's unfair. We have Where said from the, the be first of all, the president put forward in detail his principles at George Washington principles. University. Right. That's not quite a, a lot of detail. The president stood before you. I can't remember if you were here Friday night. Some of you weren't because you cut out early, but a lot of you were. Oh. And he put forward in detail with numbers what he's willing to do. He then referred from the podium to the fact that White House officials would be briefing in detail what our plan is. Now, the purpose of putting forward a plan on paper, our interest in this has been to get a compromise, to get a deal. It has not been to politically position ourselves, say, with things that uh, uh, appeal to our base, maybe pieces of legislation that we know can't pass, but it will be you know, greeted warmly by certain constituencies. Our goal, and the reason why the negotiations have been conducted the way they have been conducted, it's because we want a result. That's the way the president has, and it is simply not the case. Uh, you know, member the senior the members of the House Republican it. leadership can open their desk drawer, pull out reams of paper that represent the president's proposals and his counterproposals and his counter counterproposals and his understanding that they need more of this and that he would like more of that. There is plenty of detail. But if the, even the president gave numbers on Friday night, White House aides were saying last night he was giving the speech to the nation because most Americans were not paying attention until last night. So even if he gave these numbers on Friday night, they have not, the American people were not paying attention Friday night by your own estimation. Well, I, so why didn't he say last night, here are the nine things that I support. Here are the numbers. Here's what I want to do on taxes. And, and just look, lay it out and say, call your congressman the, with this, not with this. The thing. point, the point, I mean, you, the fact is you, you, you address the nation only so often on prime time. The president has been out here with an unbelievable amount of regularity talking to you, talking to the American people throughout this process. He has put forward in great detail. I mean, you know, if you guys haven't talked about it on the air or put it in your newspapers or on online, uh, then you should because the detail is there. Secondly, he needed to talk to the American people last night because uh, for a good reason, because they have their own lives to worry about and they count on Washington not always to take care of everything, but to take care of the big things, like making sure we don't default on our obligations. And he needed to talk to the American people, to those Americans who haven't been paying close attention, to let them know where this stands and why it's so important and why the risk is there that if Congress doesn't act, and we believe it will, uh, something that has never happened before in our history could happen, and it would be very bad indeed. That's why he had to address the country and why he uh, wanted to explain to them his view that compromise is so necessary. One other quick thing. I think on CBS radio this morning, Dan Pfeiffer said that if Congress does not act by August 2nd, this could lead to a depression. Is that your position, that we might have a depression in America? You know what, I, I, depression is a, you know, how you, what I know, what economic uh, uh, experts have said is that, and, and again, Republican and Democrat, Jim Baker, Ronald Reagan, all sorts have said that a default on our obligations would produce an economic calamity. How that, how you define that obviously depends on, on how long it lasts and what the ongoing implications of that would be. We don't believe it's come to pass. You know, but, you know, economic calamity is plenty scary but and but we should not weekend, even entertain that. But over the weekend Democrats are saying there's going to be a Boehner drop if there's no action. Asian markets are going to crash on Sunday. It didn't happen. American markets didn't crash on Monday. Okay. Thankfully, they have not Ed, crashed on. I'm, but I so move on, but you should go on the air and tell your viewers there's nothing to worry about. That's <laughs> that's that's one approach. Chuck, Jay, why not release the uh, the last offer that Boehner made you? I mean, I, I, I said if you don't want to release your own plan, release that plan. If that's the I deal, the, that's the last offer he made, and you guys are willing to go back with a few minor tweaks, release it. Well. The last week, release it. I'm not going to, look, we, we, we have shown a lot of leg on what we were uh, proposing. Where? From the podium, right here. <laughs> and from, from the, the, you know, the, the Roosevelt Room. The, the, you know, you can, certainly the Speaker of the House can address, or his people can address, 
what they were willing, you know, what their last offer was. They claimed that they why walked away from they the they table because of the four hundred billion. Why not you do it if they throw it out there? I mean, the you're president stood here, Chuck. Again, I can't remember if you were here. It might have been Kristen, but the president stood here on Friday night and went into great detail. You should look at the transcript. President, yeah, president's know, people met nothing with. Out there. Why not just release that plan? Is it because you, you I mean, what? You need something printed for you. You can't write it down. There is ample yeah, detail. It's not a plan. No, it's not it a plan. Is it was details of the plan, but it wasn't a plan the same way that we're getting a plan on the House side or that we're getting a plan on the we Senate side. We don't know what the not. Medicare thing is. We don't no. know what the Social Security part of this is. There wasn't. I mean, there was a lot of. We talked in great things. detail about what's in Medicare, and you know it. Why not put it out and there, though? You guys went look before the American people last night, and I know that you're you're probably getting frustrated because we're all asking a version of the same question. But you went before the American people last night and said. Come, you know, call your members of Congress and tell them we want a compromise. Well, you had a plan that if you were making the case for. It mm -hmm. sounded like a version of the compromise. Release it to the public. I, I mean, that's... 1.5 to 1.7 trillion dollars in agreed upon domestic discretionary non-defense savings, cuts. Other savings, and, and, and on the most important stuff, the tough stuff, the stuff that makes uh, it's very hard for Democrats to do it, but they'd be willing to do it. Important savings on entitlement reform. You know the issues. The president talked about it. Other people talked about it in terms of the kinds of reforms that would produce significant savings. Okay, Significant savings in defense, $400 billion. Significant savings in defense spending. All right, Significant savings in revenue through closing loopholes and tax reform that would produce uh, by lowering rates and broadening the base that would produce significant savings. Um, yeah. There, there, there are details we can go through. Details, and uh, you, know, you know what we put forward. You know, again, this is a fluid situation. The point is, as both parties have said, they were engaged in serious negotiations. We were close to an agreement. One party said they walked away because of an insistence on an extra 400 billion dollars in revenue. We said we could easily talk about that and resolve that issue. Um, and that's the kind of compromise. dollars in, in new revenue that's into correct. the Treasury coming out of tax reform. Correct. And what parts of, and, and was entitlement reform going to be cuts up front and then a condition? Well, you know how the, uh, things that have been talked about in terms of the reforms that, that would obviously be in the entitlements be phased over a certain period of time. Nobody's talked about uh, up front uh, tax revenues, for example. The President himself said nothing before 2013 uh, and, and how these things would play out. Uh, but these were significant savings, real savings, the kinds of things in terms of entitlement reform that people have talked about for a long time, and Republicans in particular, the President was willing to do. Uh, and he was looking for a partner, and he felt he had one, and he hopes he still has one going forward. If he comes back with that $800 billion, why don't you guys just accept the deal? Ask, ask uh, a senator to introduce it. In the Senate. We'll see. Carol. Just quickly to follow on Chuck. I mean, the President did say to us on Friday that you guys would open the books and show us the paper. And then when we were in the Roosevelt Room, there was paper that we asked for that, that we weren't actually physically handed. So the senior people in that room that walked you that? through the numbers, okay? It, 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 you know, I mean, we we can engage in this, but you know that the, the, the reason why we've approached it this way is precisely to to make it, to create the optimum circumstances for a compromise. It is, most of you are veteran Washington reporters, you know how this process works, that if you, that when you put forward a position, it becomes highly on, on, on difficult issues before a compromise is reached, it becomes charged politically, and your chances of actually getting an agreement diminish significantly. That's how it works, you know that's how it works. And it's for that you don't? Well, you should. Others do. It, 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 it is precisely because we wanted and believed and hoped that we could reach a compromise, that the negotiations were conduct conducted the way, the way they were, by both sides, by the way. Um, you know, it is one thing to say that, yes, Republicans put forward plans that everybody knows can't become law. Republicans were also engaged in quiet, detailed, concrete negotiations to reach a compromise. Don't worry about activists tearing this. Activists on your side of the aisle tearing and theirs, them apart. And but theirs. that's why you didn't, that's why this hasn't gone public. You, you know how it works. Of course. I understand that, but that is the reason you... Because we wanted an outcome that, that, that if, 
as we've talked about, we've cited Bob Dole and others, you've got to hold hands, get in the boat together. Okay? That's why. 